At the time of recording this video, this $8,000 laptop is on sale for about $4,200. This is the HP ZBook Fury G10. This is the Mac daddy of 3D modeling creator laptops from HP. And the craziest thing about this laptop is that you can upgrade it anytime, anywhere by simply sliding this over and popping off the bottom cover, immediately giving you access to four SSDs and four RAM slots. Absolutely insane. So the customization abilities of this laptop are incredible and the performance is even more amazing, which we'll get into in just a few minutes. But first and foremost, let's check out the usability and the build quality of this laptop. We'll talk about some things that I love, some things that I don't like too much, and then we'll see if this is the right laptop for you. Now, first and foremost, the assembly of this laptop is great. Now it is a thicker laptop. You can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen right now definitely thick. But being that this laptop has so much performance and so much customization available to it, it comes in at just over five pounds. So not insanely heavy for such a power packed laptop. Now taking a look at the assembly, you can see that the side panels fit into the bottom cover so nicely. There's such a smooth edge right here. So they did a great job assembling the laptop, even here where the corner sharpens to a 90 degree angle. It is not a sharp angle and it is assembled so nicely. Now taking a look at the ports on the right side panel, we have a Kensington lock, network adapter, two USB type A's, headphone jack, a security card slot. And then on the right side panel, we have a full size SD card reader slot, which you can slide in and out easily there, a little protector for it as well. HDMI, mini display port, two USB type C's, and your power adapter. Now the mini display port is nice because it just gives you more ways to connect the laptop. Obviously you could run a lot of your displays through USB-C or even through the HDMI, but mini display port just gives you an extra option for this laptop. It is a bit of an older technology, but still very useful today. Now taking a look at the open and close on this laptop here, it is a heavy laptop so it opens and closes easily with one hand and it has a nice hinge it doesn't have too much screen bounce when you let go of the screen so that's really nice now this is a bit of a thicker aluminum top cover so we don't see as much screen flex as we might see on something like an hp victus or even an hp omen so definitely a little bit more rigid screen here on the z book now let's spin ourselves into the interior of the laptop this would be one thing that i don't love about the laptop is that the trackpad is not actually clickable so that just makes for a little bit more of a thought provoking workflow. It's not as intuitive because what I like about fully clickable trackpads with click buttons is if you're just kind of browsing the internet or working through stuff, you just go ahead and click, right? Just click. But with this, you have to do like either the tap or you have to then like move your finger down and click and then go over here and right click. So it just, you just have to kind of think about navigating a little more. One laptop that comes to mind that I think they do this very well is going to be the ThinkPad from Lenovo. What I like about it is you can just rest your hand up top here. And then as you're scrolling around and moving your trackpad around, you can just go ahead and click or you can just go ahead and like right click. And so it's all just like right here at your reach without having to like get your thumb in the right position to then make your clicks. So it's like a little thing, but I think when you're using the computer over and over and you're trying to have a better workflow at every little nook and cranny, that is a much better layout than having the click buttons at the bottom. I'm not sure if that's patented. I feel like it might be because really one of the only brands that does it. Um, again, don't quote me on that, but it just, why more brands don't do it, I'm not quite sure. Now we do have a full size numpad here on the right side, so that's really handy. Then we have, so it's really handy for creator, so that's really handy. We do have a full size numpad on the right side where we don't have that on something like the ThinkPad, so that's a really nice option here from HP. Full size shift key, half size up and down arrow keys, full size left and right arrow keys. And the keyboard feels good. It's very reminiscent of an HP Omen keyboard. It's very quiet, nice medium key travel, and it feels overall very good beneath my fingers, very legible and readable letters here on the keys themselves. Now for a little audio sample, I'm gonna give you a quick sample of the keyboard and trackpad in use so you can hear what they sound like. Now we do have a webcam along the top bezel with a manual sliding cover. Here's a quick sample so you can see what that looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the HP ZBook Fury G10 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And of course, the speakers. The speakers come out here along the bottom of the chassis. They're facing towards you with this nice curved angle. And so the audio is actually pretty solid for bottom facing speakers under your keyboard deck. Here's a quick sample so you can hear what it sounds like.
Now, if you're feeling like you want to customize the RGB on your keyboard, you can go ahead and jump into the Z Light Space app right here on the bottom. And you can see I can go ahead and switch to green or purple or orange or yellow or blue. So there is some customizable options here for the keyboard, which for a workstation isn't very common. Normally they keep things pretty basic, but HP has gone ahead and given you a little bit of RGB customization here on the laptop. One area that I was impressed with this laptop would definitely be the battery life. For an i9-13950HX and an NVIDIA RTX 5000, all of which I did not have very, very tight control over because ZBook does not have a really robust command center where you can turn off and on dedicated GPU and tweak the settings. It's all pretty automated. I was able to get eight hours and 24 minutes for the Passmark productivity, eight hours and three minutes for streaming video playback, four hours for Photoshop work, and two hours and 42 minutes for video editing. So a really solid battery life for such a powerful computer. Now, speaking of a few more specs, we have 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.18, and a max screen brightness of around 489 nits, according to my tests. So we have a great panel on this device as well. And this is a matte display, so you're not gonna see too much reflection off of this. So whether you're in the sunlight or in a room with some bright overhead lights, you won't be too distracted by the reflections in the display, which I personally really like. Now, again, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability at this moment, again, when I recorded it, it was on sale. You can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks for this laptop. You can see here in Geekbench single core, multi-core, Cinebench R23 and Cinebench 2024, this laptop is at the top end of all of these charts. So really good performance for the simulated benchmarks with that i9-13950HX processor. That is a beast processor. Now, as we get into something more real world oriented, let's take a look at Blender Classroom. Great performance in Blender Classroom. However, it wasn't able to get above the RTX 4090s that I've reviewed inside of the Zephyrus G14 and the SCAR 17 from ASUS. So this A5000 is very powerful, but if you're looking for something more powerful in Blender, I'd lean you towards an RTX 4090. Now, moving on into Photoshop, this had good performance, but it was not blowing me out of the water. As you can see, the HP ZBook has about a 1000 and 71, plenty of performance inside of Photoshop. But if you're looking to show off to the neighbor kid who has a strict scar getting a 1,358 score in Photoshop, well, he's gonna laugh in your face and throw a lollipop at you. So if you're looking for Photoshop benchmark scores, this isn't your winner, but this thing will get excellent performance in general. However, looking at After Effects, that's a whole other story that RTX A5000 really shows you great performance, getting a 1,036 a top contender for After Effects. Benchmarks are gonna show you great performance. Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, all really good scores, but not the top of the charts. I'm really impressed by RTX 4090s and RTX 4080s coming out this year. However, where you're really gonna get the most benefit out of this GPU is going to be inside of SOLIDWORKS. You can see that there's not even a competition. The only thing close to this laptop was two generations ago when I was able to review the G8 version of the Fury, and we scored a 177. This year's model scoring a 232. Nothing comes close to this model. If you're looking for a killer SOLIDWORKS laptop, the HP ZBook with the RTX A5000 is gonna be the best laptop that your money can buy right now. The score is off the charts and it's gonna give you all that you need for great performance. Now, as we move on into video editing, we're still gonna see great performance out of this RTX A5000. We're gonna drop zero frames for B-RAW and 158 for red footage solid score. Now, as we move on to the 4K export, this is a nine minute 4K clip placed into Premiere Pro and then exported out at full quality 4K YouTube settings. And we have a two minute and 23 second export time, solid export time. Now checking out the 6K export is good, but it didn't blow me away. 16 minutes and 23 seconds is excellent, but it is not astounding because last year's G14 was able to pull off a 13 minute export time. And this year's G14 with the RTX 4090 was able to pull off a 12 minute and 27 second export time. And don't forget to mention the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i at 12 minutes and 26 seconds. And that's like a $1,500 to $1,700 laptop. 
This one, MSRP is almost 8,000, like I said, on sale right now for about 4,200. So if price is something that you're looking at, then there are better price to performance options, but not in regards to 3D modeling and SolidWorks and having such a powerful workstation with the security card and a lot of the benefits of having a certified workstation with SolidWorks with an RTX A5000. Taking a look at DaVinci Resolve, four minutes and 33 seconds, great export time for DaVinci Resolve in the right spot for the average high-performing laptop in 2023. One of the best things about this laptop is the amazing battery life matched with the extremely high performance components that are put inside it, matched on top of that with the customization that is just a slide away. This laptop has so much to offer and in a fairly light package, I am seriously impressed by the functionality, the build quality, the usability, as well as the on-the-go friendliness of such a power-packed beast laptop. So if that sounds like something you're looking for, the HP ZBook Fury G10 is definitely something you're going to want to consider. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your purchasing decision. I'll see you in the next one.